In an age where cosmopolitanism seems to be all the rage, it is surprising to many how Warsaw still manages to inspire such fervent loyalty and unashamed pride. When many call themselves citizens of the world, I, for one, proudly choose to call myself the son of Warsaw. For you see, my friend, there is a city like no other, a city persecuted, martyred, battered and bruised, a city that died and rose from the ashes like a phoenix, a city still wounded and scarred, which has not forgotten the sacrifice of its own, a city that survived its own death. She remains, semper invicta. There is, my friend, a city that remembers. And how can it forget that on a sunny August afternoon, against all odds, 50,000 Poles stood up to their German Nazi oppressors, armed with barely a few thousand rifles, handguns, makeshift grenades, and enough ammunition to last a few days. The boys and girls of Warsaw went to battle against the German tanks, machine guns, heavy artillery, and planes. Like David, they fought Goliath, desperate to free themselves before Stalin's troops could replace Nazi barbarity with an equally brutal communist tyranny and they took control of the Polish capital for 63 long and grueling days, letting an indifferent world know that Poland yearns to be free, independent and self-governed. For every brick of what was once known as the Paris of the East, they willingly offered their blood. Hitler's fury and German revenge came swiftly, as Warsaw stood alone, abandoned and betrayed by its allies yet again. The Germans murdered 200,000 Poles and lay waste to a thousand years of history and culture, leaving merely a pile of rubble behind them. So how can we forget when our city still remembers? The symbols of the resistance are still painted on our walls. How can we forget when the streets we walked down were once front lines, the churches we pray in were devastated, the buildings we live in were fought over, and in our courtyards the resistance fighters not only married, loved, laughed and danced, but also prayed and buried their dead. How can we forget when the city is bejeweled with wartime chapels? How can we forget when out of the doorways we use every day, resistance fighters ran out into the hellfire of battle. The balconies our grandmothers dried their laundry on were used to hang people, and in our cellars and basements, hundreds were burnt alive. How can we forget when our parks were once places of mass executions? The manholes we walk over were evacuation points for thousands of fighters. Streets lined with boutiques were once cut off by barricades, and the riverbanks of the Vistula ran thick with the blood of Polish heroes. How can we forget? When the street lamps and columns still bear war scars, the marble stairs we use are stained with the blood of Polish heroes, and memorial plaques and monuments on every street corner remind us of the bravery and horror of those days. How can we forget when some of the heroes of those days still live amongst us? The enemy sought to obliterate our city and existence, and yet our forefathers resurrected it. That is why we cannot and will not forget when our city still remembers. And you too, if you ever are in Warsaw on a hot August day, when you hear the sirens scream, stop, look up at the sky, and just for a minute, think back and pay homage to the boys and girls of Warsaw who fought like lions for the ground you happen to be standing on. <laughs>